Once again, we've applied power to our lasers and we've activated the argon laser with a power of just under 20%. Now we will go up to our acquire tab and click on that. And now we can activate our lasers on the main screen. It is on this screen that we can turn on the laser that we're interested in working with. And as you can see, when I click on the tab for the UV laser, the red light indicates the laser is powered up and a line comes down showing that a laser line is being generated and this line comes down to show me the dichroic mirror which we'll talk about in a second. But if you look on this spectrum, you'll see that on the visible spectrum we now have a single laser line of 405 nanometers. If I turn the laser, the UV laser off, that laser line goes away. Now from time to time you might turn on the laser and not see a laser line on your spectrum. All you have to do is double click on it and the laser line should come up. So that's the UV laser. However, we may also want to work with a visible laser. And so we click on this tab and again you see a red light come on. However, no laser lines are displayed on the visible spectrum using the visible laser. The laser lines only come up when we increase the power on the visible layer. Here you see that I've increased the power on the 458 laser line to 3% and a laser line shows up at 458 nanometers. I can do the same with 476, 488, 514, 543, and 633. And so you see rather quickly that we have seven laser lines that we can use to illuminate a whole host of fluorophores everywhere from 405 nanometers on up to 633. It is very important when you're using the confocal microscope to keep the laser power low. A rule of thumb is to keep your laser power below 10%. If you increase your laser power, you are using the laser more than it possibly should be used. You may be wearing out the laser a little more quickly. You're certainly generating more heat in the laser bank, which is not good for the lasers. And you run the risk of photo bleaching your fluorophore. So as a rule of thumb, try to keep the laser power very low. There is a way to accommodate the brightness of your image without increasing your laser power and I'll show that in a minute. Let's focus on the acquisition mode tab and we will talk about sequential images and mark and find at a later date. This has to do with repositioning the stage to find objects of interest. But the important thing to remember from this tab is that we should start out in XYZ mode. That means that we are going to be recording images in X and Y and in Z, which is focus. So we're going to gather three-dimensional images under the XYZ tab. We could select other options for recording images. For example, we could do X imaging with time. So we can do a time-lapse image on the x-axis or we can do x and y and time. So the system will allow us to do time lapse over x and y and even x, y and z and time. We can also do scans for lambda which means we are scanning in x and y for a particular wavelength. So you can tell the system to only scan in x and y looking for a particular wavelength and ignoring all other wavelengths. This tab is very flexible in terms of the scans that we can start, but let's continue with XYZ. The other tab that is very important to use is the XY Acquisition tab. Again, we showed you how to minimize that using this arrowhead, but for now, we want to keep this open. On the left here, you see that it gives us the format in resolution in terms of the number of pixels that we have in our digitizer tablet. In this case, it defaults to 512 pixels across and 512 pixels down. 
This is a great place to start to begin your imaging. But as you can see, we can select from a whole host of various resolutions all the way up to 8,000 by 8,000 pixels in X and Y. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, we're defaulting to 512 by 512. You also see that there's a speed tab. This allows you to enhance the speed of the digitizer or the speed at which it captures images. This actually controls the speed of the mirrors in the scan head, very tiny, very precise mirrors. And here we're defaulting to 400 hertz. Normally we'll work at 400 hertz or 700 hertz, or in some special cases, we might work at 1000 hertz. Music